Something happened that I think all collectors hope for when they enter a thrift store. Something in the range that I collect was hiding on a shelf of my local thrift store. At first I did not quite believe what I was looking at. Okay, it's not an XCD Sorcerer or VIC-20, but to me this very much counts as a vintage computer. We are looking at a Power Macintosh G3. This was not the only item that appealed to me while visiting the store. I'll show a couple things that stood out to me. I like the way this Daewoo television looked, and also something I can really appreciate on a CRT television is composite video in on the front panel. I have limited space and like 40 CRTs at this moment, so I have to let this one go. There was also an interesting USB record player from Roadstar in a suitcase. Probably bad quality, but it still looked quite new. Another CRT television. <music> Also this Eris Hi-Fi system. From afar it looks nice, but when we get a little bit closer you can see the beat up state of the cassette deck. Not sure why they are even trying to sell this. Also no knobs on it. This VGA cable rolled up like a garden hose looked interesting as well. An automatic antenna rotator. Here I have to prevent myself from buying weird stuff because I really considered it. But no, you're right, I do not need an automatic antenna rotator. Awesome box of this Canon QS50, and yes, it's a quiet sensation. Next to the Power Macintosh was this Sony Video 8 camera, with no accessories like the charger, which probably makes it quite the challenge to test. I really like the way this camera looks, but I already have a lot of these camcorders. So back to the computer. It also comes with an ADB Apple desktop bus keyboard, which I at first thought to recognize as a keyboard I already have that uses rubber domes and is not so nice to type on. It's also very grimy. Anyways, I headed over to the register and got a nice discount out of the blue and put it in the trunk. Let's head home. I think a good starting point is to give this grimy keyboard a good clean. As you can see, it's covered in a, some sort of dirt. I started with alcohol, but I could see that it did not really clean away the gunk. I have seen this before and think that a magic eraser will probably be better to clean this keyboard up. As you can see here, it looks much better when I go over it with a magic eraser. So I went over the whole keyboard with the magic eraser. And the eraser looked disgusting afterwards. Also I cleaned the cables and after this, of course, most importantly, my hands. So here's the computer. I'm not sure how I feel about this design, but still I find it interesting that this is an Apple computer. So it came with the zip drive, something that made it really appealing to me. A CD drive and a floppy drive. Here is the fragile power button and the label, of course. If we take a look at the back, we see a parallel port, the ADB port, Ethernet port, a sort of networking slash printer port of some kind, the sound card, I believe, and another Ethernet card. The label says that this is a PowerPC G3, 266 MHz, 512 K cache, 32 MB of RAM, I assume, 4 GB hard drive, and 24 times speed CD-ROM drive, and a zip drive. So I got out my Apple RGB monitor, that has an interesting story of how I got it, but I could not find the footage, so that's for a later day. But it is related to the other PowerPC G3 that I started to restore a while back, but still have to finish. I have not yet tested this monitor, so we will see if it works. After turning it on, I had a bad feeling about it. Then I pressed the power button to turn on the computer. I heard the power supply spin up and saw the light turn on. The keyboard blinked and an image popped up. Clearly this monitor is going to need a repair, I think, but that is an assumption as a retro amateur that this tube needs new capacitors. Also I could see a floppy logo and a Happy Mac symbol. Then the image disappeared, so I think it will be better to use this 15 pin to VGA cable. I had to look for like an hour to find it because I forgot where I put it. And I have a lot of cables and adapters. So I connected it to my open source scan converter, a device I really like. I had to figure out what pins would work and then I got a white image in OBS. 
Then a ghost decided to try the CD drive as it opened out of the blue. Like I hoped there was still a disc inside. Inside the drive we found a disc containing OS X 10.2 Jaguar CD1. Interesting, do you need multiple discs to install OS 10? Let's put it back in and see if we can load it. I don't think the open source scan converter would work, so I got out one of my trusty old Dell monitors. You can pick these up for a couple of bucks at most thrift stores and they have a quite a nice display and a DVI port which makes using it with HDMI very easy. So there we go, let's do another test. Huh? An Apple logo, and also an Apple logo I did not quite expect to see. This one looks quite modern. It appears to be loading something. Aha! A macOS 10 loading screen. So I took six hours to read the license agreement and decided to agree with it. Then I had to select a destination for the operating software. Hmm, there appears to be a 120 gigabyte drive of some kind with an exclamation mark behind it and a 7.9 gigabyte drive. Not like the label on the back set we would find in the computer. Let's go with the system drive. Easy install, it's preparing the disk. Nope, the disk apparently was not prepared to have the operating system installed to it, since it came up with an error. Ok, let me get a couple of my Macintosh compatible software disks. In cases like this I always try to throw a bunch of disks at the computer to see what would happen. I also hope that this interesting disk might, wor might work on the system. This is an Apple Surface Source disk. I believe these were used by service points to reference as service manuals or something. Also this Muppet Treasure Island shareware classics and a bunch of 3.5 inch disks. Really like the way the Sony box looks. Let's try this Surface Source disk first. Nope, nothing happened. Back in the blank cardboard box it goes. I decided to try the OS X 10 disk one more time. Maybe it would work this time. Went through the process again and I kid you not. It tried loading it for 25 minutes but then just disappeared on me and shown the blue screen of emptiness, not of death. I clicked through the disk utility to see what it would show, also I tried booting from the disk itself and when I pressed the C key while booting it could load the original OS, well, sort of. I got this blocked screen and a floppy image with a question mark, so I force fed the computer a bunch of 3.5 inch disks, which it all spit out immediately. Also I tried this Macintosh system disk. Which in its own right is a piece of art in my opinion. But also the computer rudely spit out this piece of computer history. Probably a bit too old for its liking. I'm afraid this video is going to end like a bunch of mine have recently. With me promising to put in a sort of a modern replacement drive. Yes, also in this case I think the best next step is to see if we can get this SCSI to SD working with it. Assuming it uses a SCSI drive of course. Also a good excuse to look under the hood of course. So that is what we will try in an upcoming video. I want to thank you for accompanying me whilst testing this interesting beige box. And for watching.